World class and with us tonight, Delhi, who would become a Premier League superstar, England international. But it started looking like that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look too bad. Look at that baby face. <laughs> 11 years old, you joined that football club. 16 years old, you were in the first team. I think the, the, there was a quote there from Gary Neville, he's fearless. <laughs> Did you have any fear about making that step up into the first team? At MK? Mm. <sighs> no, I don't think so. I remember the first time it happened, it was kind of random. It was like, we used to do like an indoor football sessions, like, you know, like futsal. Mm -hmm. So we'd like train indoor when we were younger. And then Carl Robinson, the manager, he was just there after training. It was like a Thursday or something. And he was just there and we didn't really see him that much. He never used to come, especially to the indoor training sessions. And he just said like four of you are going to be with the first team. Uh, I think it was at the weekend or for a cup game. And then we just waited, like seeing which names he was going to call. And he said me and I was one of them. So yeah, I started from that. And then after over time, just stayed with them and yeah, worked my way in the first. Thing. What do you think, can you remember what the biggest challenges were for you at that stage? <laughs> not getting beaten up by the <laughs> my teammates. Um, they always you got quite. You mentioned that to us before, <laughs> and you were sort of half joking. But but why was that a problem? Uh, I was just young. Uh, I was a little bit mouthy, and I, I was. They were teaching me as well. Maybe like a uh, tough way, a tough love. I think it was. Um, but yeah, they was all great with me. But I, I think that what you've just said there in that I, I always remember young players coming sort of joining the first team, and. That little bit of cheekiness or person, I think what you're talking about there, I think you need to have it. Because sometimes I've seen players come into a group and they, they, they don't show that person, they, they don't shout for the ball. You, you know, little things in training where you need to make an impression. You've, you've gone there and you'd say, they might think you're a little bit cocky, you've got a little bit to say for yourself. But you've gone there and being yourself. I think that's a big part of making that step for an academy to train with the first time, uh, with the first team for the first time. It's not just your qualities, it's your personality and character. Yeah, I think the one time I really remember was like, well, I was a bit like, oh, OK, I shouldn't have said that. It was like a Friday, day before a game. Um, and we used to do this like young v old training session, like just a game. And then the losing team, you would vote who was the worst trainer on that team. And then they, the, whoever got voted the most votes would have to wear like a yellow shirt with like whatever on it. And I hadn't been training with them that long. And then you'd have to like say your player and give a reason why. <laughs> and um, some, I think they know me, so like they knew I wasn't being arrogant or like I was just being like, you know, it's my personality. Um, and Darren Potter, obviously we played the same position you know, as well. You never did you? So I nutmegged him and scored just before the end of the game. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, like obviously it came to the vote and I voted him. And I was like, oh, because I nutmegged him. And obviously I didn't realise how bad that was, but then like one of the players was like, oh, you should have said that. <laughs> and then he was like, <laughs> <laughs> he was like yeah, it, he was fine. But it was a... Uh, I'm sure he loved it when, when you were alongside him in the MK Dons <laughs> team and scoring ridiculous goals. Yeah. And that all happened very quickly for you. Your, your rise, we've got a few to show you, Delhi. Your, your rise happened very quickly and you, you did seem to find it quite easy. And people were talking about you right from the start. Were you aware of that? Not really. It was kind of just like, I don't know. I was so like in my own world and like, I mean, I always thought like I was, not in a, like a bad way, I always thought like I was the best or like, I'm going to be a professional footballer. There was never any question about it. So when people started like talking about me, it wasn't like, oh, what's going on? It was like, okay, this is what like I expected in a way. And I think I needed that at the time to like, when I did get put in them situations, like when I went to Tottenham or when I first started training with the first team, because I thought so much of myself in a good way, like not in an arrogant way, I didn't like get scared or I didn't like try and hide. Like I wanted the ball, I wanted to play, I wanted to show, and I wanted to entertain people. And I think obviously the managers liked it, so. That, that reminds 17. me a little bit, sorry, when you, when you spoke, speaking to Wayne Rooney in the past, that mentality, Wayne Rooney said he went into the Everton team and almost felt like he was the best player straight away. You, you're talking about actually going and playing men's football, 16, 17, and not getting that carried away with yourself, because you're actually thinking, I've always thought I should be doing this. Yeah, I think it's like, you have to, no one's going to like tell you you're the best, or if they do, you have to, if you don't believe it yourself, then you're never going to really be the best, I think. All the players you see now playing, the young players that, like Cole Palmer, I'm sure he believes he's the best in that team. Maybe not in an arrogant way and he wouldn't say it out loud, but to be able to go there and, you know, get the ball, take the penalties, you have to have a certain arrogance about yourself. And it can come across in a bad way and some people wouldn't like it, but if, you're, if they know the person you are outside of football and not on the pitch, I think everyone's different when they cross that white line. And I think as long as that doesn't, like, 
flood into your personal life and you know your personality as an actual human being then that's I don't think there's anything wrong with that you mentioned Cole Palmer. I was about to reference a hat-trick that you scored at the age of 17 against Notts County. And just wonder if you share this sort of trait that, that he has as well. That, you know, explicitly, you, you, you weren't a goal scorer or you weren't a centre forward, but goal scoring came very naturally to you. Is that always the case? Yeah, I think when I was like, from like under, t I always wanted to like, I always used to be a striker. Um, so you started off as a schoolboy striker? I started off as a striker and then it was, uh, a manager I had for quite a lot of my youth team, uh, like a lot of the, the younger boys grew before I did, so I was a lot smaller, so they used to like bully me off the ball a lot. And I had a man manager called Dan Machichi who like moved me, I think I must have been 14, he moved me like into a cent central defensive midfield. And then from there, so it weren't as physical, you had like a lot more time. Um, so from there I sort of stayed as like a deep midfielder. And then even in these clips, I think I was playing in like the two deeper midfielders. It wasn't until I went Tottenham that I actually went back more like attacking so I think yeah from these positions I'd always like make late runs into the box and get goals so. and you, you started to get a reputation for scoring spectacular goals as well <laughs> that volley you scored against Coventry I just wonder if you could also share with us a story about what happened after this <laughs> this game and this goal <laughs> so yeah I told you earlier it was, uh... <laughs> so after this game I think I don't know if you was there I think wait when did you finish? I finished 2013 have we got the year of that goal? That's 2014. I think You've just missed me. I just, <laughs> yeah. Liverpool were playing West Ham, I think, in London. And then I went to meet Brendan Rodgers after that, uh, after that game, the night before the Liverpool game. And we had a conversation about but no, it never happened. So. How did that conversation go? <laughs> it went well. Um, you know, I think I was at MK and I was happy there. I think even when I joined Tottenham, um, I went back on loan. I wanted to go on loan because we was, you know, I wanted to see the team get promoted. Obviously, it was like my local team. I wanted to. We were second in the league, I think, when I joined Tottenham. And then, like, we had obviously six months left of the season, so I wanted to go back and try and help them finish that off because I thought by that time I'll be like definitely ready to go to the Premier League. And it all worked out well. So. But did you want the Liverpool move to happen? Or not? Uh, I felt at that time I was ready to take the next step. Um, and the way that I was playing at the time, I think it really suited me. That was the main reason why I went to, to Tottenham. Um, it was purely based off the manager um, at the time. Uh, and yeah, I felt at that time I was ready, but and then it didn't happen for whatever reasons. And you know, I think I'm a big believer in everything happens for a reason. So obviously then going to Tottenham, maybe it wouldn't have gone as well if I did join Liverpool. Mm. It's interesting because every time he scored a goal for Tottenham, we'd all be saying to each other, he should have been at Liverpool. Everyone would be sending texts. Why, why, why didn't we get him? Why didn't we sign him? I mean, it was a, obviously a, you know, a bad problem for us, but it worked out well for you, didn't they? I mean, it's all right. You guys beat us in the Champions League final, so sorry. Yeah, so it's around about like <laughs> <in> the <laughs> What were you involving into as a player at this stage then? So this is your last season at MK. Uh, I, well, I was still playing eight. I was playing in the two, we played four, two, three, one, and I was playing in the two deeper ones. So I was just like finding my feet as an eight getting goals. I mean, Steven Gerrard was a, and Frank Lampard were two of my, the people I watched growing up playing and they obviously both got a lot of goals from midfield. So, you know, watching them trying to add my own little touch into my game. I think naturally I was trying to be more of an eight and then when I went to Tottenham, obviously it, I went into a 10 and it worked well. Um, so. So, so when you went to Spurs, did you imagine or did you see yourself going in straight away into the first team and making an impact from the start? Uh, I mean, yeah, I think I'd planned, like, there's obviously so much planning you can do, but I wouldn't have made that step to there if I didn't think I was ready to play there and I wanted to play there. And, you know, I wanted to show everyone there that, you know, I deserve to be here. And I did that. And I felt like in training, you know, I just felt good with, like, the team. And then we played, like, some pre-season games and I felt so comfortable with, like, the players and the, the level. Um, so, yeah, I was just waiting for my chance. Maybe happened a little bit quicker than I might have expected, but I wouldn't say I was surprised. So you, you, you signed for Spears as a, as a central midfield player. That's where you're playing for MK Dons. When you made the move, what was the talk about where you would play going forward? You know, did you sign there as a midfielder? Was it a shock that you ended up moving further forward? Uh, yeah, I signed there as an attacking eight. Um, but I think just the way the team naturally flowed, it worked perfectly for me to be in that 10. Like my strengths as an attacking player, it was just, 
perfect for that system and for that team and the players we had at the time. So when it did happen, I went like I went mad about it. I was like, I can get goals, get assists. Um, you know, I played with some amazing players. So it was, uh, and I think playing, starting in an attacking position when I was younger, dropping back. And then, you know, when I first started going into the MK first team, sometimes I'd play left wing, number 10, until I finally got my position in the eight. But playing all them different positions gave me like the understanding, okay, when I, this player's here, he should go here because I'd played there. So I kind of tried to go off that. I thought it was really interesting what you said earlier, Delhi. And we're going to show some goals from the 2015-16 uh, season when you, you really sort of announced yourself on, on the Premier League stage. That you, you, you actually said in some ways it was easier playing in the Premier League than it was in League One. It, it always sounds like when I say it out loud, I even think that doesn't sound right. But for the players that have played in both, maybe like the passes that come to you, they come to you, like when you make the run, the ball's dropping perfectly on your foot. They're looking for that pass and... You're just all kind of on the same wavelength and it, it makes it easier. You talk about wavelength. This is something we used to analyse at the time. That relationship between yourself and Aldevira, the, the amount of goals you score from that sort of 60-yard pass into that channel. Yeah. There'd, be, there'd actually be a lot that goes into it when I break it down to myself. Like, there's so much... Like, it's not as easy as just, like, running in behind. Like, there's, there'd be, like, a few movements before that I'd do and that they would know I'm doing or, like, if Harry drops... If Harry drops deeper and goes like towards my side, that defender, if that defender goes with him, they know I'm running in behind there. Nine times out of ten, and if I don't, then you know I'll be dropping for them to bring that centre back for Sonny to run in behind. Like it was just kind of a natural thing we did. It wasn't really something we worked on, but they knew that was one of my strengths, and I knew that you know Ericsson when he gets it, if I've dropped deep, he knows I'm spinning in behind and the ball's coming with quality. So it was like something we kind of naturally grew together. There's probably one goal though in a Spurs shirt that defines you. Well, certainly that people remember you for is the one at Crystal Palace. And I'm curious, at what point are you thinking of doing this? Uh, it was all kind of off instinct. I think a lot of my best goals were. Because um, it's kind of them ones, it's like, OK, where did that come from? So when he, this was, I think we was losing and this was to equalise or we was, win, we was drawing and this was to go 1-1, one, one, which is why the goal was more important to me. <laughs> Not because it was like a great finish, but just because of like the importance of the goal at the time. But interesting that you would try that in those circumstances as well. Yeah, I think I grew up playing a lot of park football and that's the kind of stuff <laughs> you do. Um, it's all about entertaining, like getting nutmegs and stuff like that. So I tried to keep that as like my identity when I did go into men's football and like that's what the kind of stuff I enjoyed, like little nutmegs and things like that. So as well as being professional, I tried to like have fun as well. <laughs> it, w it was about the collective at Spurs and it was about trying to push on and, and win a trophy under Mauricio Pochettino and Spurs were getting close to it. Towards the back end of the season, you had a game at, at Stoke in which you were front and centre of. And you were getting close at this point. Yeah, um, we felt that as a team, players and as a manager, and just, you know, around the club, we felt like we're just missing one more thing to really push us into, you know, title contenders every you, year. You talk about, when you say one more thing, you're talking about a specific player or you're talking yeah, about the mentality? Was, maybe a bit of both. I think we were just missing, like, I think it was more, we wanted to, like, see that one more player come in who's going to really push us either. Delhi, have you know, a look at that. Just, just twist your neck and have a look at that one. So that was four games to go after that game. You got within five of Leicester. I think we were all asking the question whether they were going to slip up. Were you asking the same question within the camp? Did you think it was achievable even at this stage? Yeah. Um, I don't know when we stopped thinking it was possible. I don't know. I can't remember when it stopped being possible, but we it was after the with, Chelsea. with West Brom and then, and then it was um, at, yes. at Chelsea. So I got banned after the West Brom game, probably showing my age when I punched the guy. And then <laughs> I, got, <laughs> I got banned after West Brom, so I missed the Chelsea game. Well, um, even that, was that... Because of the tension, because of the pressure? No, I think it was just stupid, me being stupid. I think, um, and that was one of the moments that I felt like, okay, this is when me and Poch really like, because I thought he was going to like hammer me and like, he called me into his office and I was like, oh my God, what's going to happen? Yeah, like, and then he called me in and he, I don't know if he would want me to say, but he like just showed me a clip of him getting sent off and like we had a laugh about it. Because um, he knew it weren't like, that's not my character, it was just, yeah, a rush of blood in the moment. I, I mean, we all loved that team in terms of watching them play. The f great football, it was intense, it was aggressive, but you were probably in the best Tottenham team there's been, probably going back to the mid-80s, when you know, we were in FA Cups and UEFA Cups. Now, 
we've always, also, there's a feeling in football that Tottenham always lacks something when it comes to the real, the big game, to get over the line. And that was a great side, but it couldn't quite get over the line, whether it was a league title, whether it was an FA Cup semi-final, whether it was the Champions League final that you mentioned before. Was that... What do you put that down to? That, that team should have won something. Yeah, it's tough to say. I've, like, we had... When I think back to it, we had, like... We was the best team at the time, I would say. You know, we would go to everyone and we would try and beat them and we would never like change our game for anyone. We would try and dominate everyone. I mean, there was a lot of great teams, but um, yeah, I just felt so confident wherever I looked. You know, we had Harry up top, Musa, who was the best player I've ever seen or played with. Was we had Eric, yeah, we had Ericsson, like we had uh, Kyle Walker and Danny Rose on the as fullback. It was like such a strong team everywhere with three single. Um, we like there was just moments where we just felt okay we just need this one more thing to like this one player that can like really push us on and that never happened and it was just kind of like disappointing for everyone what was the greatest disappointment was it was it that season that we've just shown it was actually the season after when you had the best defense in the league the best attack in the league as well statistically yeah but still weren't able to get over the line uh I don't know which one was. They were both tough to take. That was the Antonio Conte Chelsea. They had a fabulous run under him. Yeah, they was. Uh, I mean, with t in like this one, Chelsea were like going on uh, unbelievable runs, and like you know, you'd watch their football and be like, okay. The last one was tough because like after a game, we'd, we'd be like three 0 up at half time, and we'd like go on our phones, look at their result, and they'd be like, it's nil nil, and then we'll come in after the game, they've scored last minute, and make it one nil, and we're like, how long is this going to go on for? Like that one was harder because it was kind of like the whole season. We were like. OK, 5-1. After the game, they've won 1-0 own goal. And it's like, <laughs> this is going to keep happening. But. So when we're talking career highlights for you, are we talking about you in a Spurs shirt, Champions League final, or are we talking about England in a World Cup semi-final? Uh, I'd say the Champions League, obviously, it was good and bad. Um, it was amazing to get to the final, but to lose against Liverpool the way we did, it was, it was very tough. It was an amazing moment. Um, the whole season of like that year when we was with Leicester and the season after with Chelsea, with that team, that whole thing, that whole them two seasons were like okay. They were for me two amazing seasons. Um, and then for England, obviously the, the World Cup. Uh, so yeah, I'd say probably them ones from the top of my head. Obviously had the the Euros when I was young, uh, when we lost to Iceland. That was. Horrible. <laughs> but it was obviously a great moment for me playing in my first tournament as like a as a kid. Um, but yeah, not, I wouldn't say that was the highlight. <laughs> Listen, you've had loads of time to reflect on it all um, over the last couple of years, Delhi. What what's your head at in terms of thinking about why perhaps you weren't able to maintain those levels that we saw from those earlier years at Spurs? Uh, I think a lot of different things off the pitch. Um, I think I spoke about it in my interview. I think. Don't want to go over it too much again, but um, I know the, my level as a player. Um, I know what I can get to. I know uh, how good I can be when my head's in the, the right place, and you know I'm feeling good. Obviously disappointed with the injury right now, but yeah, I'm just excited to to get playing again. It's hard for me to even watch football. Like obviously I've come on here and watched that, but it's it's been tough for me. Like this past say eight months has been hard to watch. Um, what, what, what type of level do you think you can get back to? You know, you've, you've obviously had problems, but you've been out for a long time, injury this season. I mean, do you think you can get back to what you were? I mean, I hope so. I have a reminder, you know, like you can set reminders on your phone. I have like a reminder every 11 o'clock every day, World Cup 2026. So that's my like aim for now. I think people would be like, oh, he hasn't played in a year, but I don't care. That's my, I know where my level is. So, so the situation is you're out of contract, this summer, uh, you will be a free agent. What sort of club are you thinking? What, what are we talking about here? You're, you're 28, or you just turned 28. So, you know, in theory, there is a lot, a lot of time ahead. But where are you setting your, your targets? Uh, the only target I have is the World Cup for now. I think, obviously, I'm injured right now. I'm signed to Everton. Um, so my mind is just take it day by day, make sure my, heal, my injury heals right, make sure I'm in the best possible condition after summer. Um, Do you think you'll be fit for the pre-season? Yeah, I'll be, I'm, I'll be like, it's annoying because I'll be like just fully training as the season's ending. So I'm like, OK, it gives me like, it's annoying, but also, you know, as a player, like when you're getting close, you want to push yourself and like, I think maybe that's what happened the first time. Like I got 
too close and I was like, okay, I'm there. Let me just push it. I, like showing in the test, like, okay, I'll, I'll do the running test. Like I'll get like top end of the team, even though I've been injured. Like I want to like push on and push on and show that I'm there. And like, it's, sometimes you just need to like relax and be like, okay, let's not rush this. You know, when you think it's sort of what level you can get back to, and I know obviously you've got a target that's a, a couple of years away, and I wouldn't actually di divulge interest from other clubs, but I mean, are the Premier League clubs actually showing interest in you right now in terms of, you know, coming back and starting pre season? Because obviously there's not long to go of the season before you know it, you're back in pre season. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm signed to Evan, I think it'll be disrespectful to speak about anything else whilst I'm right here, um, and I'm, they've been so amazing with me, and you know. I don't know if that's off the cards to be the next season. I don't know that yet. So um, I'm not going to talk about any of that because, yeah, they're a club that's been amazing and I don't know the details of that situation. But, you know, I want to stay in the Premier League. I want to be at the highest level playing against the best players. So. Is the right manager important to you as well? I mean, we've talk, you've heard you talking with affection <laughs> about Mauricio Pochettino, for example. Um, maybe not as much now as it was before. I think, especially with this injury, it's, like, I don't know if you had any long-term injuries. Yeah, 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 a couple, yeah. yeah, yeah it's like it's, easy, it's, it? it's difficult, but with the process I went through in the summer, it's almost like that got me ready for this. And like, I've been able to, even in the toughest times during this, like I can't lie and say, it's oh yeah, it's been all easy. Like I've been happy the whole time. Like there's been some dark days during this, but I've been able to like process them days and allow myself to, you know, experience that feeling and channel it into like the right reasons and it's done nothing but made me want to get back to the top more. So I'm like, okay, I just need to take a breath sometimes and like relax and work towards what my end goal is, well, the next few years and use this as a reason, as a learning tool for me. And uh, yeah, I think it's just exciting. Even like maybe some players would panic and be like, oh, like I'm, I'm out of contract in the summer and, you know, I've had a, an injury for a year and a half, but I'm like, this is a great opportunity for me to show myself and show what an amazing story it has been and what it's going to continue to be. I think going through this just makes when I do get back to the top even better. So it's like, OK, I just want to get there. It'd be an absolutely amazing story. What you, you know, some of the things we've seen there, some of the things you've done, Obviously, it hasn't gone your way in the last couple of years, but I mean, to see Deli Ali back at the top level scoring goals, I think what a story that would be. Deli, the redemption, <laughs> the final chapter. Yeah, the wait will be worth it. So I'm just. We are, we've all got our fingers crossed for you, Deli, honestly. I think, I think everyone in football really wants <laughs> to see that happen as well. So we wish you well with it. And thank you so much for joining us tonight thank as well. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. That's Deli.